Alrighty. <clears throat> Let's continue. So, remember how we delimit stuff? Remember when I gave you the example of the boxes and I told you these are the lids? And we use what to at the limit a block we use opening and closing curly brackets right every block of code we delimit with this so anything we declare any variables we declare within a block is only available inside that block right <clears throat> so we have a block of code in the main. Right. So we have we have a main here. I'm not gonna write the whole thing, but that's how we did the hello world, right? And I explained to you earlier an if statement, right? We use the if, and then we did something like I age or my age greater or equal than 65 and then we use another set right we did that right and here I had declare my age right I want to give it a value I, I think I had 32 there. so the computer reads top to bottom, right? And it sees this set of curly brackets, the red ones. And inside this set of curly brackets, I declare my age, right? And then I use an if statement, and I have another set of curly brackets. So my question is, can I, can I use my age inside this set of curly brackets here? Can I do my age? equals 70. Can I do that there? So the H is inside the red curly brackets. And then going down below, I have another set of curly brackets. So can I access, inside these curly brackets, can I access variables that were a level higher? What do you think? So if I have a big box, right, and I have a smaller box that's inside, and think of it like, you know, in the police station, you got those mirrors that you can see only from one side. So you can only see from the inside out. So inside this smaller box, you can see to the bigger box, but the bigger box cannot see inside. So the answer is yes. I can have more curly brackets inside, and this is available. You can access it. But what if I do something like this? You know, I do int, um, I don't know, your age, and I say 15. Can I say, your age equals 30. Can I do that? So, what I did just, did I just say? I said, when you declare a variable, you can use it after, right? You have declared, and you can use it inside any other color brackets and it's going to be available until we find the closing curly brackets. In my age, sure, I can use it here. So here, your age is inside this set of curly brackets, right? That means it's only alive inside this set of curly brackets. Is this inside those curly brackets? No. So you're going to get an error saying, or an exception saying, you know, the variable doesn't exist. It's not declared. 
So, there's something called, when I said the variable being alive inside this set of curly brackets, the proper name is, or the proper term is, the scope of the variable. So, the scope of a variable. So the scope of a variable is, when is it accessible? And it's accessible within the color brackets. It was declared on, and then the inner curly brackets. Okay. So this variable is not accessible because it's outside, <coughs> outside those set of curly brackets, right? So we say this is an error because the variable is out of scope. When we did a class, the Hello World class, we have a public static void main, right? That's the point of entry. this point of entry, right? So anything I declare here is only available here. Besides having attributes, a car can do some other, some other stuff, right? A car can start, can shut down, can move. So those are actions, right? So we have methods that do stuff. So I can do something curious. This one has this word static, right? These ones don't. There's nothing there. I'll explain to you why in a second, or a few minutes. How do I know the car is running or not? So can I start the car if it's already started? What happens if you turn the starter. You got this weird noise, right? And what happens if you keep doing it while the car is running? Well, not that dramatically, but so you'll, you'll damage the starter because the engine is moving at a faster evolution than the actual starter. And can you shut down the car if it's already shut down? 
I mean, there's no key, you can turn it even further, right? It stops. So, I could use a variable to say if the car is running or not, right? So, I'm gonna have a variable type boolean saying, I'm gonna use is running. So when I start the car, I can say, I can start it like this. Right. And when I shut down, I can say, So basically, just set the variables. I mean, I, I guess I could check and do an if statement if it's already running. Don't start it, you know. So, I'm gonna erase this for a second. So, a class, we call it like a blueprint, right? I have a blueprint of a car. So I have the schematics of a car, right? I want to know how the Tesla works. So I have this blueprint. Because I have a blueprint doesn't mean I have a car. I haven't built it yet, right? So I have this blueprint. Well, I guess green print. So the blueprint is a set of instructions and attributes that will be constructed when the actual car is built. Okay? So, I say every car is gonna have a gear, color, make, model, glance, and plate, and you can determine if your car is running or not. I mean, my car might be running and yours might not be running, right? So, these fields are unique for each car, right? Or I should say, not unique for each car, because, I mean, we can have both that same black car, you know, and we have a Viper together, you know, you have a Viper, I have a Viper. I wish I did, but, you know, you have to like, like the Lotus, you have to change the timing belt within 2,000 miles. I'm like, it's, it's so expensive. I mean, you buy a car that you have to run it, you drive it, and every time you drive it, you have to take it for like major maintenance. So anyways, but anyway, so each car has these unique values, or not unique, I will say, uh, they're not a person, but it's like personal values, you know. So we call this when it's unique to each. I'm gonna put up more. Uh, arrow here, so instance fields. We're gonna call them inst instance fields. So those set of attributes that are, you know, associated with one specific car. So one car can be running, another car cannot be running, and every car will have its own set of instance fields. So, the opposite of instance is static, okay? So, if I have a blueprint, it doesn't mean I have a car, right? So inside my blueprint, here in the upper corner, I have something called 
cars built. So in my blueprint, my piece of paper, I have a tally of how many cars I have built so far. So I have, I have a blueprint, I don't have any cars built. Do I have a field called cars built? Yeah, I have a space to store that, right? So I built my first car. So if I feel, build my first car, I put a tally there here, right? And I build my first car. That's not good, right? So I have a car, right? I build my first car. Then I build a second car. Alright. Well, a blue car here. And they're identical, the only thing that change are these attributes, right? That put two. So before I created build cars, I still have that field, right? It was just empty. But the field was there. So when I have a field that it resides on the blueprint not in the car itself. In the car itself, I reside the color, right? So this is the orange, this is the blue. But the, ca the number of cars built doesn't reside here in each car. It resides in my blueprint, right? So this is what we call a static field. So anything that you see with the word static like here, it means it resides at the blueprint, or, or more, or in the computer science we say it resides at the class level. You know, it's a static field. It's basically what it is. It simply says. How many, uh, if I have two cars, I have two variables of type in all color. Each car has their own color, right? I could have a million cars, hold on a second, and I still have one field only that has the count of how many cars I have built. Make sense? Yes? I was gonna ask, what was the computer science team for the it's called a static field, that's all it is. So, notice this one, so I call it instance field. This instance field means they are, each car has their own set, a copy of those. Each car has an integer that has a value here, another integer for the color. But this one is not, is not in the car. This is on my piece of paper. That is, existed that feeling when I, even when I didn't have any cars, right? So, when that feel is, um, I have enough room, hang on. So these are, instance fields. So when a field is in the blueprint, is at the class, we call it static. And the number of car builds is uh, basically I could use an integer, right? So I have to use the word static int. I say cars built. So, if you remember, 
when we use the the um, scanner class when we use the scanner class we have to create new we have to create an instance of that class basically we have to build a scanner before we could use it so before we can start a car we have to build a car right and the instructions how to build it or the attributes are here so I'm in this orange car and this orange car I'm like building it I'm in the assembly line for Ford and then I see oh wait what kind of screw this one needs in this side of the car if I have a doubt where do I go to check I go to the blueprint, right? I just see what's the specs and this so this guy can go and look at the blueprint. This guy can go and look at the blueprint. Right? They're all pointing to one place. For reference, if you will. But if I'm the blueprint, can I say what color is the car? Well it's just, it's just a piece of paper, I don't have a car bill. You know, I cannot say, oh which car? You know, so which instance will be the correct word. So basically, what I'm trying to say is any instance can go access anything that's on the class static. But the class cannot go the other way. So the blueprint cannot go see what's in each car. Each car can go see what's in the blueprints. Follow me? Because the blueprint wouldn't know which car to go to. So, in other words, an instance object in this car can always refer to any static fields or methods from the class. But static methods cannot see or in stati in static any static um, items in the class cannot see instance objects. Did that make sense? So basically the blueprints, which is the class, cannot see the instance. But the instances can see the blueprint. Yeah. That's, is that just basically because in the blueprint you have your cars like numbered out in your blueprints you have all the attributes and stuff inside the blueprints? No, no. So each car has its own color. Is the color in the blueprint or is the color in the car? In the car, right? So if I look at the blueprint, what color is the car? The blueprint's going to ask. I mean, I have a million cars, you know. If you want to know what color is car number 500, you have to go to the car 500 to see what color it is. Follow me? And if I'm building this car, I'm inside the car 500, and I say, how many cars have we built so far? Well, I can always go look at the blueprint. Make sense? Yeah. It makes sense until you actually have to do it. <laughs> right? But so anyway, so going back to this, there's only one field type in. In memory, it's only 32 bit allocated in the entire program to indicate how many cars are built. Right? But how many ints are allocated, allocated for color? Well, it depends how many cars you have, right? Because each car will have its own color. So that's why they call instance. Every time you create an instance of an object, these instance fields are allocated in memory. And they each one has a copy of them. But the static doesn't matter how many you have, there's only one. Does it make sense? 
right, so. Remember I also told you, this is a parenthesis. Uh, I said an integer is 32 bit, right? So basically you waste the other 32 bits because our computers are 64 bit, right? But see, I notice, notice I declare one int and I declare two. These are actually together. So I only allocated one set of 64 bit. One half is the year and the other half is the color. So if you declare the variables all together like that, if it needs more, they're gonna be put together so you're not wasting memory. All right, so far so good? So, for simplicity, I'm going to make my word size 100, okay, instead of 64. So I don't have to keep adding 64 to each one. All right, so I have this RAM. No memory space. So this is one thousand. I'm gonna do hundred synchronous. the uh, scanner class you use that keyword says import it says import at the top you say import java that utility that scanner we did that last time so what that does is brings the blueprint to memory so we bring this blueprint to memory and it says all right this is the blueprint I'm gonna use this as my blueprint. And that's the blueprint of the car. And it has instructions. And it has a field called and and it has this called car build, right? And I'm gonna put the value there. And I have another static, but this is not a field, this is a method. Type void. And it's called main. Right? Those are the static things. And it has a list of the things I need to create. A list of this, we need to create no, I'm gonna write it here. List, list of instance fields and methods. Now, earlier today I said to you, anything that's inside, when you declare a variable, the set of curly brackets is accessible to the other set of curly brackets as long as they're inside the curly brackets you declare it with. Remember that? When we did the if, I said, you know, it could access the H inside. That's almost true. So, 
in here in this class, I created a variable called is running, right? And then I created another set of curly brackets, and I use that variable. And that's totally okay. Now, can I do this? Can I do that? And the answer is no. Because this one has this word, static. Okay? So, if I'm inside the car, I can see this car, I can see its color, I can see its year, I can see its license plate. Right? But in the blueprint, I can't see that because that's an instance. So, this start the car doesn't have the word static in front. That means it's an instance method. So this is an instance methods. So instance methods can see instance fields. They can also see static fields. The static stuff can only see static. Alright? So, I can't do this. Because before I can use an instance field or a method or anything, I need to instantiated, right? Like we did in the scanner. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to create a variable type car here. And I'm going to call this um, Tesla. And the Tesla I can do equals new car. Also, when this happens, oh, I declare of a variable type car. So what happens? I allocate it here. I call it Tesla. So actually, here Tesla gets replaced with the address, right? then I have this new car. When I see the new keyword, what the computer is going to do is go goes to the blueprint. And it has a list of these instance fields and methods it needs to create. So it goes and makes them. So it makes, and I don't know how much memory, but let's assume it uses this much memory. So in here, somewhere there's an int color and a year. There's a string make model and play uh, and then you have a boolean running running and you have a method called start the car. and shut down. So it loads that, right? And it returns the address where it was created. So, oh, here. This one has the address for 200. Right? What if I do another car? do a Viper. So what happens is, oh, I got another variable. And the Viper is actually replaced with the address 1800, right? 
and then this viper I'm gonna instantiate it too okay so what I did was I allocated memory for a card and each this car has an in color and year and has a string for make model plate the boolean for if it's running and a method called start car and shut down car And it returns the address where it was created. You see? So each car has a copy of this by itself. Right? But cars built are still here. Am I losing you? I'm gonna do it in Eclipse in a second. So now, I can do here, I can do with the Tesla, Tesla dot start the car. If I do Tesla dot start the car, then the car is running for the Tesla is going to say true. And if I do the same thing for the Viper, the car. The Viper is going to also say it's running equals true. You follow me? So if I'm at the blueprint, can I say, is the car running? You're like, what car? You know. But in here, the car, I can say, hey, how many cars have you built? Oh, actually, right now we got two. So the Viper can see how many cars are built and the Tesla can see how many cars are built. So anything static can access only static stuff. However, I could, um, I guess I can do it here. And I'm gonna insert the line here. I can say cars built equal to We're gonna do it in the clip so it looks cleaner. Um, so, notice this is the class variable type. It's the same. And this is the instance we created, right? Because we have the new. And it's the same type, right? When we call a method that looks like a class, it has the same class thing. What do we call that? I told, that, I told you that last class. Remember what that's called? When you create the instance of that class, Or you build. What another? What's another build? Another word for build. Sure. Yeah. So what's this called? Constructor. Right. So this is a constructor. Right. So. We constructed two cars. Or we instantiated two cars. And now we have the two cars started, but we can shut down one or the other or both and do whatever, right? So we're gonna work on classes the entire semester. And right now it's a little bit overwhelming, I know. Okay. Um I might 
I'll have time to do this too. Alright, let's take a break and then we're gonna open Eclipse and we are going to build our class there.